Hey, welcome to iLecture Online and in our next segment on chemistry we're going to take a closer look at atoms, molecules, and ions. So the first question is kind of an interesting question, what is an atom? And a lot of people think they know what an atom is. Well typically when you ask people what is an atom they say oh an atom it has a nucleus and inside the nucleus you have protons and neutrons and outside the nucleus you have some electrons that are flying around the nucleus. Okay that is indeed correct. But let's take a closer look at this. Now this particular example right here is really a lithium atom. The reason why I know it's lithium is because it has three protons. One, two, three protons in the nucleus and it also happens to have four neutrons. Most lithium atoms have three neutrons and, I mean, sorry, three protons and four neutrons. It's the number of protons that define the element that it is. The number of neutrons are there to keep the nuclear strong forces and the electrical um, repulsive forces at bay, keeping the nucleus together, and that's a whole other story. So the neutrons are really there to help keep the nucleus intact. Around that we have, in this case, since there's two protons, we have an equal number of electrons flying around the nucleus at very high speed, and we'll take a look at that a little bit more closely. Typically, the place where electrons reside around the nucleus is divided into regions, uh, energy regions. We have like the innermost energy region and the second most innermost and so forth. So they will fall in particular places. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but electrons typically like to be as close as possible to the nucleus because they tend to attract each other. In the case of lithium, you have room for two electrons in the innermost energy level, and then the third electron just has to go to the second energy level. That's a little bit further out from the nucleus. The most simple atom in the universe is, of course, hydrogen. Hydrogen has just a single proton as its nucleus and a single electron going around it. Hydrogen is an, ex is an ex exception to all the atoms because normally in the nucleus, the number of protons and neutrons are either the same or the slight number of neutrons, there's a slight, uh, there's a greater quantity of neutrons than there are protons in the nucleus. So normally the number of neutrons is greater than or equal to the number of protons. In the case of hydrogen, there's no neutrons in the nucleus, unless you have the uh, isotope deuterium. And uh, so therefore you just have a single proton and a single electron in the case of hydrogen. Now size-wise, notice that the nucleus tends to be extremely small. The diameter of a nucleus is usually around 2 to 3 femtometers. A femtometer is 10 to the minus 50 meter. That's an extremely small volume. So the nucleus of, a, of an atom is extremely small. The electrons whirling around it are actually much further away from the nucleus. This is not the proper ratio of size that I drew. The diameter of an atom that is made up of the electrons is typically about 10 to the minus 10 meters. And notice the difference. There's easily a factor of uh, 50,000 to 1 or 20,000 to 1 between the diameter of the nucleus and the diameter of the orbits of the electrons. Now, what does that really mean? Well, let me give you a little bit more information. Mass-wise, the vast majority of the mass is right here in the nucleus. The electrons have virtually no mass. Roughly speaking, the mass of a proton is about 2,000 times the mass of an electron. It's actually about 1,852 times, but just roughly speaking, it's about 2,000 to 1, which means that more than 99.9% .9 of the mass of an atom is in its, in its nucleus, and almost no mass resides in the electrons around it. So, why do you need even electrons to make an atom? Well, for one thing, it, naturally, since you have a proton there, it's going to attract negative charges, so there's a natural attraction between the nucleus and the electrons. But the electrons have a very special purpose in an atom. They actually give the atom its shape and its solidity. Let me explain. Here I have a soccer ball. Let's say for a moment that the soccer ball represents in a hydrogen atom the nucleus, the single proton. So let's say we have a single proton here, and then let's say mm, I need something, hmm, how about the little cap here. Let's say this cap here represents the electron. And actually, if this was really the case, this would probably be smaller than this in ratio. Remember, this is 2,000 times the mass of one of these. So, now, let's say that in a hydrogen atom we have a single electron going around the nucleus of the hydrogen atom. Well, how far away would the electron be if this was the size of the nucleus? So, People sometimes say, well, 10 yards, 50 yards, maybe the size of a football field. No, it turns out that if this was the electron, 
and this was the proton, this electron would be five miles away from the nucleus. Wow. So as it whirls around the nucleus, it would have like a diameter of 10 miles. It would go out five miles in one direction, five miles the other direction, just keep going around. So the size of the atom is basically determined by the orbit of the electrons, not the nucleus of the atom. Then you start wondering, well, how many times does this electron go around the nucleus in, let's say, a single second? You'd be amazed, because when I ask students this question, they say, oh, maybe a thousand times? I say, no, no, try a little bit more. Oh, a million times? Says, no, no, try a little more. Says, wow, more than a million times? Sure enough, it turns out an electron in a hydrogen atom goes around the nucleus 6,000 trillion times per second. 6,000 trillion times a second. Wow, we got to write that down. So let me put the cap back on my pen before it dries out. I can't even find my pen. There it is. All right, so let's write this number down. There's my good pen. So we said 6,000 trillion times per second. Trillion times per second. Wow, just think about it. That is 6 times 10 to the 15 times every single second. Can you imagine a little electron going around the nucleus that many times in a second? Now, what path does it take? Well, it kind of goes around in what we would call a spherical shell. So it's not simply like a planet going around the sun. It kind of goes around in various orbits like this, all around like that. And the number of times that the electron goes around is so enormous that it basically forms a presence continuously around the nucleus so that it basically forms a hard shell that then makes up the volume of the atom. So if I were to then place an atom right here and place another atom right next to it, the closest that the two nuclei of the two atoms could get together would be 10 miles because we would have five miles of distance here to the orbit of the electron and then the other one would have a five mile distance from its nucleus to the outside uh, radius where the electrons reside, so the closest two nuclei could get together would then be 10 miles at this scale. So atoms are basically hmm, empty volumes with a tiny amount of volume representing the nucleus where almost all of its mass resides and the rest is just basically empty space. So when you take a bunch of atoms and put them together, you basically have these small little pinpoint regions of mass represent nucleus, and this vast region of space around it that's being built up by the present electrons rolling around at extreme high frequencies, extreme high velocities going around the nucleus, basically making these shell-like structures that create the, the volume and the structure of an atom. Wow. So you have a whole bunch of atoms together like that. So you say, here's an atom, there's an atom, there's an atom, there's another atom, another atom, another atom, and so forth. Notice that at the very center, this is extremely minute volume where the nucleus resides, and then this great vast amount of space around it that is caused by the electrons going around extremely fast, basically being everywhere at the same time. It's kind of the way you want to think about it this way. Let's say you want to try to get to the nucleus of an atom, but you've got to pass through the electrons. Say, well, wait a minute, there's only one little electron. It, it's going to be everywhere. So I can easily get to the nucleus, but no. It goes around so fast that it's basically in front of you. No matter how you try to get to the nucleus, it's always right in front of you, blocking the way. It just basically forms that hard shell of presence around it. It's kind of really strange how atoms are structured. So. Does that mean that our bodies, since they are made up of atoms, are basically empty shells of massive quantities of volume with tiny little pinpoints of matter? That's exactly the case. So the question is, on why are we so solid? Our bodies feel solid, the wall, the board feels solid, yet matter is made up of hmm, basically tiny little pinpoints of matter with huge volumes of space around it created by the electrons. So what if we were to squeeze all that volume away. What if we were to take like the human body or a house or a wall or, or a whiteboard and squeeze it down where all the space was squeezed down in such a way that we push nucleus against nucleus of the atom? What would matter be like then? Well, what would happen is, let's say you took the entire human population, and there's now over seven billion of us, and you took all those bodies and you squeezed them down where all the space created by the electrons was squeezed down to where it was nucleus and nucleus, the entire world population would be able to fit into this little cap of this pen. The entire world population could be fitted right in there. 
Wow. And what, how much mass would there be? How much weight would it be? Well, if each person had a weight of about 100 pounds, and there's 7 billion of us, then the weight in here would be 700 billion pounds full of human bodies squeezed down where all the space between the nuclei had been squished down to zero. That's what atoms are. Very strange indeed. 